Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to show you how I made this Nightmare Before Christmas coin just in time for Halloween. Want to see how I did it? Well, let's get started. So since Halloween was coming up, I thought I might make a Halloween themed coin. I just watched Nightmare Before Christmas with my girls, so I thought it would be a perfect thing to engrave on a coin. Now what I thought would be even cooler was if the coin was not only double-sided, but had sections cut out all the way through the coin. Now, I probably could have used AI to produce an image that I could then engrave onto the coin, but I wanted to have a little bit more control than that. If you are not aware, my full-time job is a 3D modeler, but since not everyone out there is, I wanted to see if I could do it with minimal 3D modeling skills. So the first thing I did was to see what models I could get that people have already produced. There are many 3D printing sites out there where you can get many models for free, so I started there to see what I could find. The first thing I found was this Jack Skeleton model on Thingiverse, which happened to be the model that was cut up from at Sergio SR on my mini factory. The model was cut into pieces on Thingiverse, so it was perfect for me to use for kit bashing. I ended up using Jack's upper body and the pumpkin. Next, I thought it would be cool if I have Jack on one side and Oogie Boogie on the other. R.I.P. Ken Page, who just passed away recently. I picked up this model on printables, but I think the original might have been from a member named Chelsea Creates Things. I saw it in a few places, so apologies if that's not correct. Lastly, I wanted a little scenery in the coin, so I looked up the Halloween towns and came across this really cool diorama made from a maker named Magnet over on Thingiverse. They had the really cool curly hill thing, as well as this cool gate. So with all of these models in hand, I started to put together a scene for the coin that I could use to create a height map that is needed to carve the coin in Xtool Creative Space or Lightburn. I'm not going to go too deep into 3D modeling in this video, as I used a program called Maya from Autodesk that I use professionally in my job, but it's not something the everyday user would use. However, there are free programs like Blender or even Tinkercad that you can use to do some of this kit bashing, but I'll give you a couple pointers. First, you want to make sure that your model looks good from the front, as you will only be able to see it from direct on. The second thing is that you want to try to compress your 3D models as much as possible so when you convert it to a height map, you get the best depth from all the way from the front to the back. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. If you see this model, it was my original model that I put together, but as you can see, it's pretty deep from the front of the coin all the way to the back. The problem is that there is only so many levels that the website that I'll talk about in a second can convert the model into from black to white, black being the furthest away and white being the closest to you. So the deeper your model, the less detail it can give the components of that model. So you want to exaggerate the parts you want to stick out, but try to keep the model as close as proportional dimensions of the coin as possible. So with that first model, I dropped it into a free website that will convert STL files into height map data. I'll link to this website in the video description. You just browse for your model and it will generate a height map. I ran this one at 2048. I did both sides of the coin and thought it looks okay, but I thought I could do better. Next, I tried to limit the depth the website had to convert from, so I created these models. As you can see, it's far more shallow than my original model, but when I ran that in the website, I ended up with far more detail as the website was able to spread the white and black over a much more shallow distance, which gave me a better resolution overall. You can see how much more detail this generated on the right versus the detail on the original model on the left. I then took these images into Photoshop for a little more touch up. If you don't have Photoshop, you can also use the free online version that is almost identical to Photoshop called Photopea. So my goal here was to really do two things. First, I wanted to make sure that the border around the coin matched the highest point of the coin, so I created a white ring around it. Second thing I wanted to do was to add some text to the coin, which I did directly in the program. I didn't want it to be too deep in the coin, so I set it up at about 95% white, which will just ever so slightly engrave onto the coin. 
The last tweak I wanted to make in the model was that I knew that the eyes and nose and mouth were going to be very important parts of the model. So I knew I wanted to exaggerate how much those were carved into in the coin. I could have done this in the model itself, but instead I just used the burn tool in Photoshop to really accentuate the eyes, nose, and mouth so they would engrave a little deeper onto the final coin. After I had the two images I needed for both the front and back of the coin, I headed over to the laser to get everything set up. So one thing that always bugged me when doing coins is making sure that you have the design exactly in the center of the coin. Yes, you can use the framing function and get very close, but even the slightest bit off for me can ruin the coin. So the way around this was to create a template that could hold the coin. The way I did it was to 3D print a holder that I could attach to the base of the Xtool F1, which could also hold an aluminum block. That way I could engrave a circle onto the aluminum block that was the exact diameter of my coin. When I did that, it would allow me to always have a template so that every time I wanted to make a coin, I could attach this template, and as long as I place my coin design directly in the center of the workable area in Xtool Creative Space, I knew that my design would be directly centered. This was also super important for this coin design as I needed everything to align on both sides. One other thing I wanted to point out here is you may have noticed that little tube pointing at the engraving. On my last video that you might have watched where I engraved an injection mold for my Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine, I used a large fan to help clear the metal dust and debris from the aluminum, but I felt like I could have done this a better way that didn't leave dust everywhere. So what I decided to do was design a holder for a tube that connected to an air assist that I had from my old Xtool D1 machine. Now, I needed to figure out how to get it in the machine without having to leave the enclosure open to prevent the dust from escaping. Luckily, the F1 Ultra has a port in the back that was intended to be used with their fire suppression system, so it gave me the perfect entry spot for the tube. So I routed the tube and connected it to my 3D print that I can adjust the angle directly down to the coin while engraving. So now with my coin holder template and my air assist figured out, it was now time to engrave on the coin itself. Okay, so now I wanted to go over how I set up this file. So if you look over here on the left, you'll see the layers. Now, if you can't find that, it's in this little layers and object list here in the bottom left corner. You just click on that and you can open it. So the first thing that you see here is something called the mold template. And this is what I was using to create the circle that I was going to place the coin on. Now, earlier in the footage, you might have seen some of those being pretty deep. And that actually ended up causing some issues with me in the end. And that's because even though I thought the coin was sitting flush, it wasn't. Because when the F1 burns onto the surface, especially when it's doing an emboss, it does it at a draft angle. So it doesn't do it straight down because of the Galvo laser. So... I found that the best way to do this is to only engrave ever so slightly in the surface so that it's just deep enough so that it catches the lip of the coin, but not so deep that you would stick the entire coin inside of it. So for the first layer, what I did was created a mold template. So this is actually a black image that I created in Photoshop and then I brought it into here and I made the image ever so slightly larger than the diameter of the coin. And again, because I set up everything to be in the center of that mold, I want it to be in the center of the workable area as well. So if this was off to the side, the way that we're gonna put that in the very center is to come up here to the align tool. We're gonna click on that and then say align center and then it'll put it exactly in the center of our workable area. Okay, so again, this is not a, a shape. This is a, this is an image. It just happens to be black so that I can still run the embossment process on it. So you wanna make sure that you have embossment as your processing mode up here, and that's what's gonna give us that relief carving. And then if you open up this file, you'll notice that a lot of these things are not set to output, but if you were to click off of everything, you'll see what is ignored and what is output. So right now it, it's only showing my cleanup pass. So I'm gonna click on that and set that to output or to not output. 
and then I'll go back to the mold template. So if I wanted to run that holder in the coin, I'm gonna turn this on first. And when I'm working with this, I'm gonna use the fiber laser and I'm saying that I'm running it for 256 passes, but really this could probably be set something to 50 passes or so. Because again, I don't wanna go too deep into the aluminum. I just want it deep enough so that it can grab the lip of the coin. Now, if you are running this and it doesn't grab it, you could just run it again for another 50 passes and, until you feel like it, it's securing the coin. I'm gonna run it for 100% power at 300 millimeters per second. And I'm gonna run it for a 30 kilohertz frequency. And on this one, I'm not gonna descend the Z axis. I'm just gonna let it stay where it is. Cause again, I'm, I'm not trying to go too deep into the mold template. And then all I would have to do is frame and then go to the process. And then I engraved it into the mold block. Okay, so then I want to start to actually work on the coin itself. So over here in the layer, I'm just going to turn off the visibility on that mold template. And then the first thing that I want to work with is the front of the Jack Skeleton coin. So I'm going to click on this. And again, I don't want to output the mold template anymore. So I'm going to change that to not output. And I want to output the Jack model. So I'm going to say output. And on this one, what I'm going to do is essentially use the settings that Xtool already sets up for brass coins. So you can come over here and click on this brass coin and that'll give you most of the settings that you'll need. But I, I changed it a little bit, so I'm not going to do that right now. So I found that for the depth that I want for my particular coin, which is 2.4 millimeters thick, I want to run it for 220 passes per side. Now, it's a little bit overkill, but I really want to make sure that all of the areas that I wanted to cut all the way through the coin are cut through the coin. So I'm going to run it for 220 passes at 100% power and 300 millimeters per second. The lines per centimeter is 300 and a frequency of 30 kilohertz. And on this one, I actually am going to descend the Z height every two layers. So every two layers of the 220 layers, it will descend by 0.01 millimeters. And so once I run that, I just let it burn onto the coin. But as soon as you're done with that, you don't want to touch your coin because we're going to do one more step before we flip it over. And what that is going to be is we're going to run these registration marks. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see that we have these line one and line two. And what these are going to do is these are going to create a little, a little mark on the coin itself, like a physical mark on the coin. And the reason that we're doing this is that I want to be able to have some sort of registration so that when I flip the coin over, I know exactly where this point is supposed to be on the coin and on my mold blank. So this is going to engrave into the coin and into the aluminum block as well. So if you look at the settings that I have for this one, again, I would turn it to output and I would turn off the jack model after I turn off the output. And then I would turn on the output for these two, including the layer. And then I would burn that onto the coin. And then when I flip it over, you can see here that I can see exactly where that line is supposed to be, as well as where that little mark was on the coin. And so when, when I burn through the other side, I know that it's going to align exactly with that coin. So after that, we'll turn this one off. And then the last thing that we have is the Oogie Boogie on the other side. And really, it'll be the exact same settings that we did with the jack on the first side of the coin. And then we'll just, we'll let that run for the entire process. Both of these sides take about four and a half hours to run. And we'll just let it go completely through the process. And then after the Oogie Boogie is done, we'll 
turn off that pass, and then this is a cleanup pass. I run it for 20% power at 4,000 millimeters per second for three passes, 300 lines per centimeter at 30 kilohertz. I run that on one side and then I flipped it over to do the same thing on the other. If you use an aluminum holder like I do, you may notice some of that aluminum powder embedded into your coin. This is because after the laser gets all the way through the coin, it will start to engrave on the aluminum, which will start to ablate it, and sometimes it can stick to the coin. This also tells me that I might be running too many layers, but that's fine. I can clean it up in the next step. So the next thing I did was to use a very cheap rotary tool from Harbor Freight with a brass brush on the low setting to clean up the coin. This rotary is so cheap it only has one setting, so I lower the speed by plugging it into a power supply with a lower voltage than the one that came with the tool, so it runs at a lower speed. This will remove that ablated aluminum and make that coin shine. After that, I wanted to take it one step further to really bring out the detail in this coin. I used some brass black metal finish to add some patina to the coin. I just dabbed it with a Q-tip and then wiped away any excess with a paper towel. After that, I went back over the coin with fine steel wool to remove the brass black and then it was done. I was really happy with how this coin turned out. I had never tried anything like this in the past, but was pleasantly surprised with how well it worked out and this is definitely a process I will repeat in the future. It's really a cool way to take that coin to the next level. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I will provide a link to this coin in the video description if you want to make your own. If you did enjoy this, please do click that like button. Drop a comment telling me what you think and if you ended up making one. And consider subscribing for more content having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.